What's up? Let's talk briefly about Realistic Paint Studio on the iPad. For the benefit of people who've got the iPad, it's a very quirky, strange app, but probably the best brush engine I've ever used. So we're going to open this here. You start off with a bunch of canvases, obviously. Create new. We're going to do oil painting, obviously, because that's the only way you can really get certain obviously you only get where you get the canvases themselves you're limited to these sizes here but don't think that you can't crop it later or crop it yourself somehow use a dividing line or something so they're not as maybe as restrictive as they look let's go and also you've got here two choices you've got a pure white canvas and you've got a stained canvas of some kind and the stain is different for each one if you want to stain the canvas yourself, you can obviously start with a white canvas and then there is a great way to do it, which is relatively painless. But obviously, you know, you might find the stain interesting or the, the default canvas color interesting. There's no way to change the canvas color in Procreate as a whole, like in Procreate. So you see you've got this. This one I find quite interesting. This one here with the, you know, it looks like someone's just scrubbed a rag with turpentine or whatever across the canvas and a little bit of paint but let's just go with this one here oh, and also the canvases are, are different weave and they're different texture and this actually does apply to the brush strokes which I've not seen in any other app some other apps fake it um, like art set on the iPad so it fakes that canvas thing but it's all the same as far as I could tell but these actually do have different canvas weaves which affect the brush so you may find one you like better or worse and even you know this one for example the square one when you select a white version of this it has a gesso uh, quite thick gesso feeling application on it which actually applies to the brush strokes um, but let's just go with a white version of this quickly no no Because the main thing I want to talk about is the brushes themselves and how nonsensical but also useful they are. So you find yourself in this studio thing. I don't necessarily want to explain all the interface but maybe I'll have to. So you can zoom in here with two fingers like in Procreate obviously. You can rotate the canvas even though it rotates the frame in a kind of incongruous weird way. It's relatively responsive. It's it's actually not a nightmare at all to do this. It's pretty good. You can change the background and things. You know, they're all reasonably annoying, but whatever, it's all fine. So in terms of the reference, you know, we've got to paint something. So in terms of the reference, I've got a photo I took here myself. You access this reference thing by going up and you go show reference this little thing that you tick and then this appears it's much like Procreate's reference feature they added you can scale the size of the window you can scale your reference to fit the window it's all fairly intuitive obviously at the beginning you want the reference to be as small as possible so you're thinking about the big shapes rather than detail um, obviously you can zoom in a little bit or if you want to you can move it around the screen it's all great so let's talk quickly about the brushes themselves because that's the thing which maybe is not intuitive in this app the names of the brushes are not at all sensical to what they actually do or what they are and it's not really relevant anyway so you click this paintbrush here this paint box here and this will come up with a bunch of them here and they're in a certain order which you will reorder based on hopefully based on my suggestion that actually makes sense but anyway you know you can scrub on this side you can you can do something on the side of this panel here to mess around with a brush but it's not really you know and you can have a play little animation to someone using it but 
to me they're not really using it in the way that an oil painter would use it anyway um, so you know it is what it is and some of the brushes react different ways to different the layers in this app. This app is very weird behavior when it comes to layers. Layers are kind of useless, but also incredibly useful if for certain things, which I'll get on to. So in terms of the order of the brushes I've set them up here is thinking in terms of thick paint, uh, thin paint on the left and thick paint is on the right. So in oil painting, obviously you, the whole rule of oil painting you know in a sense is you start with thin paint and you go to thick paint and thin paint does not necessarily mean paint that's watery or paint that's been diluted um, it means paint that's applied thinly so the ones that I've ordered leftward here you know it's it maybe not an exact order but I've ordered leftward thin paint and then on the right you've got very thick paint so you want to be generally in your workflow obviously moving you know you want to be starting with this brush which looks like a brush that you, you know, a house painting brush or something, but this brush to me is basically, let's go in, into this. This brush to me is basically like you're applying your first layers, you know, your underpainting, or even you can use this brush to stain the canvas um, as you would with a turpentine rag and a little bit, a tiny bit of burnt umber or something. And the color engine in this app is what makes it realistic and what makes it actually behave like oil paint because when you're dealing with transparent colors in oil paint they have a glow or they have a, a warmth to them as the paint gets thinner the paint tends to get warmer in terms of its hue its chroma um, yeah sorry it's it's hue basically yeah so if you take the, the color space in this app is uh, not uh, RGB or CMYK, I think it's lab color, LAB color. And if you go around here, you'll see that sometimes there's a different, you know, it's not, not exactly your traditional, you know, you've got pink here and blue in the same color space. And as you go towards the darker side of the color space, it also takes into account everything else that's in the current part of the wheel, which you need to kind of internalize this if you're down here, it's very easy to show this with something like burnt umber. If anyone, if you've ever painted with burnt umber or even raw umber or whatever, any any of the transparent umber colors that people typically use for underpainting, because they dry very fast and they're transparent, they look they have a nice glow. So this, for example, if I go into this area here, this would be something like a burnt umber. It's a reddish um, brown, very dark out of the tube. And if I start to apply the paint here, you can see this becomes quickly as dark as real burnt umber would be if it was entirely opaque or it was applied very thickly. So, but you can see around the edges, you have a lovely glow, glowing edge. And this means that if you use a little bit of pressure, uh, less pressure, you can get, you know, equivalent of basically thin, thin paint. So this is paint that feels like it's applied thinly in the sense that it's watered down with the spirits or with the, solvent uh, or even maybe just applied quite thinly to the canvas you know with light very light touches so if you want to stain the whole canvas in a way you want to color a certain color of ground to start it off then that's this brush here on the, the far left this weird one is the way you'd probably start every painting and this brush actually it is very useful for numerous things it's also the brush that you should use for glazing um, because obviously glazing in real painting is thin paint. It's not meant to be applied thickly at all. It's a very, very thin layer. Um, so if we want to stain this entire canvas, this sort of uh, warm umber color, whatever, scrub that with the eraser of the layer, you know, make the brush as big as you can. I tend to maybe like to use the, the slightly harder pressure than they have. They still have this set in the middle by default, which is perfectly usable, it's fine. But if you maybe you get a bit more um, subtlety if you move this up, um, especially if you're going in, because these brushes have no settings, which is great. I think it's wonderful. But that means that all of the settings, all of the delicacy of the um, work has to be in your pressure and in the way you apply the strokes, you know, uh, judiciously. So biggest brush you can. You can't make this any bigger. 
and then you know you basically go in it's very slow if you're using a very big brush unfortunately so you maybe you want to use a bit more of a um i mean it's not that bad but it, this is like painting in photoshop and obviously if i'm if i use very light pressure i'm effectively taking the paint off so that's that is a useful incredibly useful method for stuff later on and things you know and in terms of blending there's a brush which i'll get onto in a second which is the essentially the blending brush and there's no blender in this you can't like in procreate use any brush to blend um, but there's a brush that effectively does the job of blending everything really well and it's not an issue um, obviously if you're covering a bigger space it's diff it's a bit more difficult uh, it's a bit more laborious and kind of time consuming and it's also it's not so easy to maybe unify large areas especially over the whole canvas when you're doing this um, if, if you really want to be you know if you want to be autistic about it you can maybe import there is a way to import um, images and this but you can't move them around transform them. it doesn't have a robust uh, layer manipulation system as in procreate or anything so if you import something as what they call a reference layer in this you're basically stuck with it uh, in the way you've initially placed it um, but if you wanted to maybe you know do this in another app and, and import it or import your own paper or import your own canvas texture maybe or something although that maybe wouldn't be so useful because the canvas is affected by as you'll see later on this is affected by an underlying uh, alpha map or something is telling it where the paint falls in the cracks and how to affect the paint so that's you know effectively scrubbed over the canvas i've made it a certain color and now we can get this other brush Ooh. maybe the hardness can go down for this that's not effective over a, over a large scale but anyway if you use if you use light pressure you can see this is this is basically me like the pen that the apple pencil is literally just falling on the surface it's this is no pressure this is but it but it's a very very fine line between adding paint and taking paint off with this brush and the other brushes you'll find they don't take paint off they don't act as effectively like a rag or as a you know a Q-tip or even like Richard Schmidt. He'll often put in details with a with a Q-tip that's been dipped in solvent or something. Um, but this is the brush which you use. And if if I, for example, have no pressure at all, you can see I can strip the canvas effectively back to white. Uh, and this is sometimes used by people like Richard Schmidt as well in doing a in doing a monochromatic painting. If I set this to this, you can see I'm basically scrubbing the canvas entirely back to white there, and that's by using the lightest pressure I can. So if you want, if you, obviously, if you want to, you know, add in, if you want to lighten the hue or whatever, but you will find yourself probably fiddling with this hardness somewhat for doing these subtle things. See, if the hardness is in the middle here you will find it difficult to take that canvas back to white unless you literally are, are letting the pen fall of its own weight against the canvas that's like the lightest pressure you can possibly apply and that means you kind of lose a bit of control but you can strip it back to white with that with that pressure anyway you may, you may find your mileage vary with that so that is the brush that you basically would use to put in the underpainting and it's not the only brush you would use to put in the underpainting, but it is. This is the thinnest paint you can really use in this app, um, and also it does a very nice line. So if you want to do a really lovely line, it goes very very small. It effectively turns into like a, even like a pencil or calligraphic line. So you can draw your composition with this. Um, maybe we can try it probably would not be good but you know 
you don't have to draw the composition in in this app necessarily you can import it again but you know you might as well in this app treat it like painting And then obviously you would use this same brush. You, see, I've not, I've not even changed color here, and I'm already getting, you know, an amazing. You get an amazing range of color out of this, without even having to change color because it's taking in account. It's taking account of every color that's in this color space is actually being used in this very rich saturated version. Even though it looks like it's black, in this, even though it looks like it's right down here, and it will become out black. You actually end up getting effectively like paint um, you know when you use transparent color in paint you get the glow or whatever and that's why Harold Speed in his book said transparent color is the most beautiful and subtle way of using color and the most probably the most difficult to handle as well but obviously because it's digital you can you know do whatever and this does this does in my opinion teach you how real oil paint works although you have to understand that Real, how real oil paint works to use this app that's the thing it's kind of a paradoxical thing where if you don't understand how to put oil painting together you know not that there's one way to do that but if you don't understand the basic dynamics you never use oil paint in your life you probably won't use this app as a painter would paint you know there's nothing wrong with that i'm sure there's crazy chinamen using this app right now to make some insane you know like concept art thing that doesn't even you know using the app in ways that I would never think of using it but it is designed to make paintings that look like real oil paintings and it does that really well if you if you understand the structure of how to put the oil painting together it really much emulates that better than any app I've ever seen in my opinion and easier as well because you're not fighting you're not trying to fake things uh, like the colors how they react to things you're just you know you're just using it the, the app is not getting in the way once you understand the idiosyncrasies of the app that's why i always look for these apps and try and find new ones and because there's people developing tools all the time that make it you know ipad for me was obviously a revelation it's about having the tool not get in the way And it just has to be fun to use, you know, and obviously there are weird things about the, these apps, but, you know. Oh, yeah. So now we can maybe come in here and, you know, uh, do the lights and the darks and in terms of the layers this this app is a very idiosyncratic way of dealing with layers so I mean in this case you can if I stay on this layer I will be in danger of obviously scrubbing out my work below if I if I'm not careful although it's not easy to do that it is and but I'm effect, I'm essentially affecting if I show you this layer this layer is gone there you go that's what I've put on this layer it's just like Photoshop except there are some things where it's not and it plays around and it, it, it you you have to understand that it's brush dependent basically so this layer business is always is brush dependent and i'll show you this in a minute but if we use a bigger brush size here let's just stay on this layer for now but if you feel like you want to go heavier or more or layer it more then another layer is essential because what with this particular brush this this one that i've got at the moment Let's just do a basic pattern of light and dark. Um, you know, no, obviously you you only want to do, you know, you don't want to do the very darkest darks, I suppose. You want to just do a shadow versus lights pattern, divide it equally really into, you know, and it's super, super fun to use. This feels exactly like I'm scrubbing on paint with a paintbrush, really. You know, it has elegant, if you're using an Apple Pencil, obviously you have to with this. But I don't know about the pe the uh, the PC version. It has the you know the fun and the obviously the good thing about it is you can undo and all that stuff. 
and change things and experiment with many color schemes and all that. That's not. So I do need to be careful. So if, if I apply light pressure here, I end up scrubbing back my work. If I was on another layer, that wouldn't be the case. 